Good, good morning everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop and I am speaking to you from the 1925 bungalow because it's voiceover time again. Here I am thrifting in lovely South Jersey and this particular store has just put these racks right at the front window and they put all the clear glass in there. I think it's fantastic. Mm. Now I'm moving rather quickly. Really, it was just to show you that piece right there, which is gorgeous. I believe that was a Fostoria piece. Candlestick. They only had one. Uh, but here's the rest of all of the clear glass. And I always dig through it, looking for interesting pieces. And I didn't really find any, I don't think, on this trip. Uh, yeah, so we're going to turn the cart around and head in a different direction. This video today, there's going to be lots of thrift thrift store shopping. We're going to see some antique furniture. Uh, and you're going to see what I put into my cart. So thanks for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We all remember tumblers like these from the 1960s. These were $2 each, and they had, uh, I think, little colonial era people doing a minuet on there, down under those trees. Is that what I see? Something like that. They were okay, but I was sort of hoping for maybe pink and turquoise rather than white and brown, so I didn't get them. Look at what's in my car. I think you just saw an old 1930s ottoman. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what you saw. We'll look at it again. It was a little on the ratty-tatty side, but it was cheap. Oh, these Grecian tumblers. I forget who made them and uh, what the name of that is, but boy, oh boy. Enormously popular in the 60s. My parents must have gotten some... Oh, well, let's look at this. Okay, vintage Ottoman. A 1930s Ottoman it is. And it wasn't $30, it was half price. So for $15, I'm going to use that probably down in the basement, throw it in front of one of the big old club chairs, and use it in my sort of 1930s basement living room area that I have. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty little mid-century teapot. Yeah, look at the colors on there. Um, what is that? That's a is that a Sebring? I can't porcelain. Eh. Made in Ohio. Oh, what am I looking at it again for? Meyerling. Boy, I'm really studying that. Any chips on the spout? No. You know, I didn't buy it. That might have been a mistake because. Uh, I don't really get into individual uh, bits and pieces, cups and saucers, and random... Oh, my word. I see one of those everywhere I go. <laughs> they haunt me. I dream about those things in the middle of the night. You know what that is. I, I swear they gave them to every newborn baby in, in every New Jersey hospital. Look at this crocheted thing. Well, not crocheted. What is it? Uh, the Ruby Flash 40th anniversary stuff. Now, what was I going to say? I keep jumping all over the place. I might, uh, should have gotten that teapot because, you know, a lot of times they're damaged and people don't always have teapots with their china sets. Oh, well, I didn't get it. <clears throat> I'm going to have a sip. What is this? Do not pull flowers from arrangements. Cashier will not sell them to you. Oh, okay. I'm having a sip of my morning coffee while I'm watching myself. Now, this isn't old, of course, and I knew that it wasn't. Um, but I picked it up anyway. I really liked the hummingbird and the, the way the relief was done on that piece, but it's just not an antique piece. 
This is kind of fun watching myself and doing my own commentary. Look at this little salt and pepper shaker. I guess he was a bride, uh, the uh, bridegroom made in Japan. He's from the Depression era. He's cute, but I don't know where the bride was. Nope, she was off with her bridesmaids doing something. So I left him there. And we'll go to another store in just a second here. Um, all right. Now, here's another... Oh, my word. This is okay. Um, it's black glass. It does date to the 1930s. It certainly does. And it had a neat little fall uh, decoration painted on it. Chipping off in places, yeah. Now, it was only $3.00. And I did not buy it. Oh, here comes the fresh stuff. Look at him wheeling it out. And I ran right over there. But the only thing I found on that fresh cart was this piece of Fenton Silvercrest made, you know, in the 60s. It was $4.50. And I didn't buy it. Now, I know you're all screaming at me. One of you just took off your bedroom slipper and threw it at the television set. Why didn't you buy that? I would have bought that off of you. Well, I'm going to explain it. I love this thing here. Kind of gives you an Art Deco feel. It's a little uh, condiment, not condiment, but a little serving tray for carrots, sticks, and black olives and whatnot. It was only $4, and I didn't buy it. So I'm lining up three things to show you, one, two, three, and I didn't buy any of them. Okay, well, what are you out shopping for? Well, you know I didn't buy that thing, baby doll head in plastic. Uh, simple. There wasn't enough meat on the bones on those other three items. And I may have to do some more explaining later about that because a lot of you might question me about that. So we may come back to that. Okay, I don't do the 25th anniversary stuff. Uh, these plates attracted my attention because they reminded me of the teardrop pattern by Duncan Miller. And that might be what they are. Uh, I'm somewhat conversant with that pattern, but I may be way off on that. So that might not be what that is, but they were nice. Did you buy anything? Well, I bought that. It's a great big green depression. Uh, you know, $8, a little pricey. Okay, I know, but it, the thing is huge. It must be 15 inches uh, in diameter, maybe 14. And there's a circle in the middle, which would have probably held the cheese compote or something would have been in the center, center of that. So if that was a cheese and cracker set, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. And it is green, which is popular, and of course it's going to glow under a black light, and that puts it into a whole other category because of the, you know, the collectors that are into the uranium glass. Or glass with uranium in it. It is depression glass, but that particular piece has got uranium in it, so it glows. Okay. This piece, take a look at it. Ten bucks. It's wonderful. Uh, Ten dollars. No issues with it. Uh, yes, I could have doubled my, you know, quote unquote, doubled my money on that. But it, but also, I left it in the store, and I know. Again, I'm gonna probably have to come back at the end and talk about all this. Excuse me, I just had a sip of coffee. Uh, oh, we're going to play a game here called Spot the Pyrex. Okay, everybody look closely on these counters now. Can you spot the old 1930s Pyrex? Can you spot it? Hint, hint. Can you keep looking? All right, I am going to tell you which piece is it. Aha, did you say that? You're right. We don't even have to turn it up. 
Look at the color. Keep going. Let's see if we can find another piece. Did you say that lid down in there? Aha. Train your eye for that that yellowish tint. It's a very pale yellowish tint that's in the antique Pyrex. You also see it uh, in Glass Bake by McKee. This piece, uh, the lid is chipped. That doubles as a pie plate. But it, they just had that one lid there. Look, I see another piece. Aha, we don't even have to turn it upside down. We will. But you saw that yellow tint. Yeah, see that? And look closely, that's the early, not the earliest, but that's the 1930s Pyrex stamp right there, uh, right as rain. And remember, Pyrex has been around since the teens, I forget, 1914, 15, 16, something like that. So we're going to line up these two pieces here. They're both early 30s Pyrex. And then there's the... Um, and, you know, none of these pieces are etched. Look at the knob, that, that very generous knob handle on the top. You see that? You would get knobs like that on the early Fire King as well. It's, it's really easy to train your eye to look for that yellowish color as you're zipping through the aisles if you're interested in that old... Um, 1930s Pyrex. There's another piece. See it? Now, I think I'm going to pull that out of there. I was hoping that that lid, even with the chip, would fit on that uh, base, but they're not the same size. Mm -hmm. Now, these are great pieces. It's perfectly, you know, oven glass. You can use it. People do like the 1930s Pyrex. It's not quite as collectible as the uh, you know, the colorful stuff from the 1950s and 60s. But somebody really cleaned out. Some old house was liquidated and all the old Depression-era Pyrex wound up here in this store. There are even some pie plates there. So there was a lot of it. I personally don't need any of it. And I have enough inventory right now. That's another reason why I'm not buying. You say, gosh, you didn't buy anything. Uh, I've got so much inventory, I'm trying not to take uh, too many new things home with me just yet. So, I'm going to leave that Pyrex there for someone else to discover. Beautiful mahogany, serpentine front drawers, $80. Oh, this is going to date to right around the World War I era. Back up so we can see it. There he is. Wave. Come on now. Not the peace sign. We wanted you to wave. What have you got in that basket? Look at the beautiful work on this piece. Now, if it had been 10 to 15 years older, it would have probably been made of oak. But when we start to get into... Uh, as we get into after the turn of the century, mahogany becomes more popular. Now here's a walnut dresser, which is earlier. This is going to be late Victorian. Again, what a beautiful piece. And I'm going to zoom in here, I think, on the wonderful brasses here, handles. They're original. Take a look at that. Just, oh, they don't make them like that anymore. A little bit on the East Lake style. Mm, mm, mm. I'm, I'm drinking my coffee here. And let's see the, there we go, the wooden uh, escutcheons over the keyholes. I love it. $85. Folks, come on. Not to be confused with that 1970s Spanish colonial stuff. <laughs> or late 60s, early 70s. Okay, I'm walking around a thrift shop, and this one I like because it has a big used furniture section. Sometimes you do pretty well in here, and sometimes you don't. Look at the big letters. I wonder what it spells. That would be great for a designer. Mm, mm, mm. Wouldn't it? 
Mm hmm. Uh, now let me see. Let me see. 1950s Duncan Fife table. 19. circa 1981. <laughs> 1978 to 1981, yeah. Dining room furniture. And it is sold. Okay. There's a cute little, probably 50s, 60s. Is that rock maple? Yeah, it looks like it. There's a single bed. There's a pineapple bed. What they And, and mahogany. I'll show you these in a minute. Um, and I don't need... I don't need one of these, but hi. I'm talking to I'm I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking to somebody. You're good. It's virtual shopping. It's okay. Okay. Do what you gotta do. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Go right ahead. I'm gonna keep talking. No, say hi. Hey. I'm trying to decide. Okay, so no, not needed. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I've got uh, a single twin pineapple bed in mahogany at, that's currently at my mother's house. That was, that, and it came from, ooh, an old relative, but it was actually in my father's bedroom and he slept in it for quite a while as a teenager. And, um, but it's at my mother's house and I can't use it where I am. So it'll just stay there in her guest room. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't have room for this because I don't have a big old 1920s house, but look at that, uh, buffet or server as people call them. That is right out of the 1920s. That is neat. Don't confuse that with the Spanish colonial stuff from the 70s. It's only $100. Very typical of that era. Mixed woods, some mahogany, great big old Jacobean legs. This was so popular in the 20s. And you, you open this up and you keep your Linens here. Look, even the inside is just beautiful. That is a nice old buffet and a big one. Of course, it would have had a matching china closet and all of that to go with it. Oh, this is heavy. I can't get that. I was going to open it up for you, but we'll just leave it like that. I'll, I'll look around. Maybe there. No, there's nothing else here. Yeah, look, look here at that. Uh... Well, you know, if I, if I had a house twice as big as the house I'm in, then I would want a house twice as big as that. So I'm satisfied. I like my little house and the things that I've got. Okay. There's a... And now I'm from your side, always And those are like... Nicht
Alright, here's a lot. How's it all with this stick? Yes, I think you are not so close. My senior dealer, seen off the other. Oh, the. Um, there's. Where's your wizard? Uh. Senior off the snap circular. The laws are in the vessel. Steady old. Stand it. Schnarr of the Emirus and yet Muscus, the wealth of the city had built the Gulls of Bus and yet not height. Sir Lady in the city of the Rock, the Gifford. Yeah, I've not never helps it. Master is as the Gulls of Bus and yet not helps it. And they put on the Gulls of Bus and back here in the Gulls of Bus and Okay, back to the voiceover. <clears throat> Hamilton Beach Model D. Cream and green. You know those mixing bowls would have been green. It's got the beaters there on the bottom. The turntable for the mixing bowls. I don't need it. The paint was rough. Could be repainted, but I like them original. And uh, so we'll leave that right where it was. But I had to show it to you. Okay. Pink, pink, you stink. No, it doesn't stink. It's a wonderful cookie jar. And I don't remember the pattern. I left my uh, little depression guide identification book out in the truck. Easy to look up. It'll take me 10 seconds when I get home. Um, I believe it might be an anchor hocking piece. But I bought it because it was in good condition with its lid. Uh-huh. It had its lid. And now I set it side by side. I also found a yellow pitcher. Now these, you just don't see a whole lot of yellow depression glass. It's out there. Three dollars for that pitcher. And boy, I threw that in the cart. Or placed it in the cart. Because just a few days before, in another thrift shop, I found eight matching glasses, tumblers, iced tea. You know, it's in the old days it was called a water set, but... Okay, if my memory serves, this is a Cambridge piece. If you remember, a while ago I found one in that... Um, oh my gosh, are they having a party on aisle seven? Uh, a while ago I found the one in that salmon color and it was missing its lid. And I'm currently using that on my dresser to throw change in. But this one has its lid, wonderful. And uh, I think this is a Cambridge piece, if I remember correctly, as I just said. Okay, so it's got its lid, and that's the first thing that's gonna go down. Very nice. Into the shopping cart. So Cambridge 19, oh my gosh, now somebody's playing an ukulele. What is going on? I see some paint by numbers over here. Let's go. Wait a minute. Next piece piece to highlight is this pretty pink depression compote candy dish. And it's etched. And it's pink. And it has no damage on it. And I'll put it in my cart. Today seems to be the day for me to be finding depression glass. And I'm not complaining about that because you know how much I like it. All right, going along here, looking at the clear, I see a lot of eh, generic anchor hawking. There's a clear, uh, like a mayonnaise compote, but it's depression and it's etched. But I can't do much with that. I don't know what the price is. It doesn't matter. $3 be lucky if I get eight bucks for it. So there's not enough meat on the bone with that piece. We'll leave it right where it is. Let's talk about lamps and lampshades. Here is a wonderful pair of bedroom lamps. They would date probably to the late 1930s, maybe even into the early 40s, well, 1935 to 45, something like that. They're old. They have kind of a deco feel to them with these uh, curly Q things on the side. I guess I don't know what you call that design element. I forget. Frozen 
not frozen uh, icicles. What do they call it? Oh, I can't remember. It'll come to me. Well, you guys can tell me. Uh, and these are in really good shape. Now, they need to be rewired because somebody put these you know, vacuum cleaner plugs on there. And those are new sockets. I don't see any damage and they're only $2.99 each, so they're definitely gonna go in my shopping cart. Okay, so, um, very nice. I don't think they're marked. Uh, you can see it's the old fashioned type of milk glass where it's a little, almost translucent <clears throat> around the edges. I've seen these before. I'll find them in one of my books. I can't think right now who made them. Now, you know, with these light shades, so you know, this is the kind of thing that's all modern, modern ceiling fan stuff. That's not Victorian at all. All of these things are relatively new. But look at these over here. Now, again, I like these. These are nice and heavy. The proportions look like antique. And uh, just the fact that I don't know, it's just something about the way they're made. I think I'm gonna buy these two shades. Um, they would fit on a nice hanging uh, hanging fixture. Um, and it reminds me of, it's almost like they're imitating the prisms. Like there's the jewel at the top and there's the, well, there's a lot of noise in here today. Um, it's sort of imitating the glass prisms, right? Yeah, so I think these are old. None of this is. But I think these are, and they're $3 each. Uh, they need to be cleaned, but let's go ahead and put them in the cart as well. Get in there. And that Cambridge piece is down there somewhere. There it is, it's hiding. All right, I think I'm doing pretty well in this shop today. Uh, I don't need a vacuum cleaner, so I do need to use the men's room. Not that you need to know that, but I'm gonna park my cart right here and <laughs> I think I'll turn the camera off now.